So I heard that, and my first reaction was just to keep walking. Because in my mind, the definition of a nigger is a human person. And for me, he was more so ignorant than I was for one saying that as if it would affect me. And and I was just looking at my like, what type of reaction did you expect? So this is 2011 going into 2012. And I, I stopped being an SOE tour, but I had the opportunity to come on this Bloomsburg traveling football team. The traveling football team was based off of the intramural school semester of how good how well you could perform. I was able to play on probably two or three different teams. Another thing I forget to mention is that when I did very more sports, also throughout my semester, I played softball, I played dodgeball, I played volleyball, I did tons of different sports, basketball. So I was selected for that traveling football team, and I got the opportunity to travel to one year to Maryland. The following year, I got the opportunity to travel to Massachusetts. And depending on how well you get at these tournaments, you got the opportunity either to go to Florida or to Texas. So one year, we did well. We became the champions of the Massachusetts and the school, as well as the organization, paid for all the students on the travel football team to go to Texas. Now, that was my first time ever catching a plane. And so I'm pretty sure most of you probably know that I used to get there two hours early. Well, I didn't get that memo. I got there probably 10 minutes before my flight. So for my first time, I got there, I checked my bag in, and they told me I'm not gonna miss my flight. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? So I called Tony Dreckman, said, hey Tony, I think I'm gonna miss my flight. I go through airport security, you know, I didn't know about the eight ounces. So I had like a bottle of body wash, I had to throw it away. I had lotion, I had to throw it away as well. Let's get through airport security, they tell me I'm on standby for this. I don't know what that is. So they explain to me what it is. You have to wait until a seat is available on the next flight going to the same, same place that you need to go. I was going to College Station in Texas, and my one flight said that, okay, I can probably get on it at 10.30. I need to point out that this is at 8 o'clock in the morning, so I had to wait till 10.30. 10.30 came around, and nothing. Nothing was on that flight. I couldn't. So then 1.30 came, still nothing, 2.30 came, nothing. Finally around 4.30, I was able to get, on, to get onto a flight. So I got onto a flight, got to Texas, and my next flight wasn't until I believe 9 or 10 at night, which was about four or five hours wait. So best believe the next time, the following year when we got the opportunity to go to Massachusetts again and we won, when we went to Florida, I was there probably two and a half hours early to not miss my flight. We went to both of these national wide tournaments and we didn't win, but it was a great opportunity. It was a wonderful opportunity. When I was approaching a graduate, I, was a, I got another job as a director for the Intermore Department. And a director basically oversees a certain portion. My third portion that I was overseeing was the flag football. I would help make schedules, I would organize practices, organize uh, meetings for referees, things of that sort. After a while, that became a lot. And so, and this is 2013 now, and I graduated, at least I hoped I graduated. I, I took a class, and it was a sociology course, and this professor would not work with me for anything. I, I believe I had a D in that class, and he was a horrible professor. And I'm talking to him like, hey, how can I bring up a grade? He tells me that, oh, tough luck, maybe next time. And I'm looking at him like, well, listen, I'm a senior. This is my last class I need. You know, I need three credits. So he says, well, maybe it will account for somewhere else. So I said, okay, I'm just hoping that everything works out. He seemed really, you know, caring and conscious that, okay, he's a senior. Maybe I should help him. I go home that summer, and he didn't help me out at all. And I believe mid-July, I, I received a message saying that I didn't graduate, and that I was two credits short. So 
I quickly began to scramble trying to figure out what I can do. Can I take online courses? I could take an online course, but I didn't have financial aid. I had to pay that money in my pocket. And the money was about, the cost was about $2,000 that I didn't have. So I couldn't do that. Long story short, I ended up having to come back an additional semester to become, you know, one more semester to take classes again. Now, to qualify for financial aid, I had to take all my courses again. In that spring semester of 2013, I had applied for graduate school. So in my mind, and when I come back in the fall, I'm going to start graduate school. I couldn't do that. So luckily, I talked to Timothy Phillips. He's the chair of the construction technology department. He worked with me and deferred my enrollment. He said that because of the circumstances and because of my academic career, how good I did, I did, he said he can understand that I can come in the spring semester of 2014. So I'm here and I'm taking these courses and really some of them I am not really worried about because again, I only need two credits and when I take these credits, I'm like, okay, I'm done. Time. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 